Hello everyone and welcome to the Dice Commando YouTube channel. I'm Andrew with you here as always. This is Go Again, a fabulous video cast covering the trading card game Flesh and Blood. This video and others like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. Please show your support with a like and subscribe and be sure to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any new videos. If you want to get involved with the channel, consider becoming a channel member. There are many benefits to channel membership including access to our Discord, exclusive deck tech and strategy videos, and the opportunity to help create channel content. I want to sincerely thank all our channel members, as I truly couldn't do this without your support. You guys rock. Go Commando. <laughs> Alright, sorry about that. Hello everyone, welcome to Go Again, a fabulous cast, a flesh and blood focus cast here on Dice Commando. I'm Andrew with you as always, and thank you for joining me again. So when when little old Benji here was spoiled originally, I thought he was really cool. To, to be fair, I still think he's really cool. Uh, but I haven't got him on the table yet because every time I try to like theory craft a deck with him, I kind of just like get to the point in my binder. I, I'm I'm an old man. I like to actually write things down. Like the DB is incredible. I'd use that to actually formally make my decks. But when I'm you know just thinking out loud. I write things down in a binder. And when I'm doing that, I'm just like, bro, this isn't this isn't gonna work. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today is like why I think Benji looks super cool, but he's kind of a trap at least for now. Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. So today I'm talking Benji right here. So this guy's super cool. I mean, granted, he's he's only Blitz, so if you're a full constructed guy, you don't care. But you probably didn't click on this anyway, so fair enough, right? But so Benji, he's super cool because he's unblockable, right? And that's, I mean, that's, well, he, he, he's not fundamentally unblockable. Don't get me wrong, right? But attack action cards you control with two or less can't be defended by cards from hand, right? And when he was first spoiled... I made the joke, he was foiled uh, actually on Covenant, I think is where we first saw him, right? And almost immediately, I made the joke online, and I, I mean, a lot of people got fun of it, but it, it was valid, right? It, I said, hey, just like that, to the, you know, the two attack, the three pitch, Scar for Scar, which basically nobody was playing, right? Nobody was playing the blue Scar for Scar. It suddenly became relevant, right? And, and, and rightly so, because he inherently start he starts at 17 so he's inherently starting with less health than most right and it, i mean it's a good card right so but but the point where i'm, where I'm going with here is he opens up a huge line of play and you know irrespective of kind of the thesis of today's cast which granted is that i think he's not very good right now with the right now being the keywords there uh, i really want to give a lot of props to lss for this guy in general because, I mean, think think about it, right? We we had a whole class of worthless cards. All right, I, I shouldn't use class in this game, sorry. But we had a whole subset, a whole, you know, spectrum of worthless, su pseudo worthless cards, right? The blue pitch, like blue pitch card for scar, right? Which is now completely awesome with this guy. I mean, blue pitch card for scar with this guy is hands down great, right? Two. The three pitch soul bead strike, blue soul bead strike, is awesome with this guy, right? So the 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 way that they were able to turn that on its head, I think, is top notch. I think that's why a lot of people are really attracted to Benji, right? I mean, I'm not saying everybody, but I think there's a certain subset of players that see Benji and they're like, "Oh, this is really cool. I can do something different with this." And so let's go into really the lines of play. I mean, the most obvious line of play with him, of course, is to just run everything that's low and just try to go wide right and that's completely admirable um in terms of going into weapons with him right he has his weapons that are, you know came out in this set the problem with them is they break right they blow up so i still think kodachis are the right, right way to go with him and you know what maybe maybe the better way to do this is just go ahead and go into the deck that I was trying to build just this afternoon, which is what inspired this guy. So let, let's do that. Let's go on over to the DB. And so what I was trying to do with this was, I mean, just, I wasn't trying to go completely low, right? Because one of, one of the primary ways people are thinking about playing him is like, well, I'll just play all zero cost or I'll play all three pitch. Primarily, it's the three pitch angle. 
And and I think that's the easy way to play him, but I don't think it's as effective. I mean, it, it certainly is an arguable way to do it, uh, but I don't think that's the best way to play him. What Where my head went after I started playing with him for a bit, and by playing I mean theory crafting with him for a bit, was it would be better to actually go um, not necessarily all blue pitch, but still go low profile, right? Um, well, not low profile in zeros and in one and two pitch, but try and still keep the deck thin, right? Because what you want to do is, or at least the theory for this was, as you can see, I'm playing Kadachis, right? So if I can keep the costs low, run a fair amount of blue pitches here, and then still run a lot of zero costs, I can pretty consistently get in those zero, get in those multiple attacks, right? So we've got the Kodachis. That's what I think is better with him, just because you don't risk losing it. We're playing the Mask because, I mean, that's really him. I mean, that's, that's his thing, right? But his once per turn effect is not irrelevant, right? So the reason that's important is, if you read it, right, when an attack action card you control hits, your next attack this turn gains plus one, right? So it's ne it doesn't say next attack action, next attack, right? So it does mean your next your next weapon gets that bonus, right? So what you really want to do, and, that, and that's why I kind of fed into the card choices that I went through here. And I, again, I want to be clear. What I'm saying here below is this is the best thing I can come up with, and I don't think it's going to work. So I'm not going to go completely through the deck because that's not the point here. The point here is why I think he's a little bit of a trap now, but eventually as things can continue to expand and get, you know, as we get more cards, I think Benji could be a lot better. I mean, that that's the thesis statement here, right? So what I tried to do here was, you see me playing the Rabbles, like why would I play a one and a two pitch Rabble? Well, the answer here is you don't want to play the three pitch Rabble because it could very easily pull a three pitch and be zero, and that's pretty bad. Uh, but these guys get a natural go again, right? So we're just going here for a pure low profile cost, if you will, punch a three, right? We're playing one cost head jab. Well, we're playing all the head jobs, right? But three pitch head jab, throw it out for one. That's not a bad deal. A lot of times you're going to be pitching that head jab for for the three pitch. but uh, And then, of course, you end with salt in the wound, right? Salt in the wound, there's pretty much no way to make that B2 to fit his, so you want to go big on it, right? You're going to go chop, 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 poof, right? Chop, 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 punch, right? Whatever you want to call it, right? Um, and then, you know, there's a couple auto includes here, like life for a life. One is freaking amazing with him right if it hits it gain one if it has less it's got the scar for scar ability which most of the time you're going to because you start less uh playing plenty to try and just get something out of it and again if it's played from arsenal it has to go again can't be blocked i mean there, there's no super high tech in this but what i ran into when i was trying to do this i was like hmm i kind of came to the realization of i, I guess part of the supporting the supporting argument for my thesis statement is if my opponent can't block me would that's not that's not bad right but if my opponent can't block me they're not spending any cards to block me which means that they're setting up their turn right i mean think think about it when we're playing the game on a normal basis if for some reason your opponent says all right i'll take seven you're like you're not like woohoo i just dealt seven you're generally saying uh oh, what am I gonna get, take next round? Right? I mean that's that's that that's how this game works, right? So if every turn we're giving our opponent three to four cards that they can do whatever they want with, I think we're going to lose faster than we win. Right? That's that's really what I'm trying to say here. Um and now, and, and that's why I kind of landed on the build that I did, which was try to just throw those punches in and then hit big at the end, because then maybe the hit big at the end would help them spend cards. Or, you know, some of these, like the rabbles and stuff, or you see, for example, here, I'm playing all of the Scar for Scars, right? If I'm doing that, the thought process there being, well, if they, because it gets go again anyway, I get to go again. So if I throw out a four cost or a four hit scar for scar, right? The red pitch scar for scar, throw it for four, and they block it. Isn't that still a win for me that they spent cards, right? I mean, that's that's. I guess that's really where my head is. So, I guess that's why I'm saying I think right now, Benji's kind of a trap, in that all he's really doing is either making them spend cards that they don't want. Or, I mean, even in best case scenario, at least at least as I can get my head around him, right? That's not saying there's not smarter people out there who can't figure out how to use him better. 
but right now his main problem is he's either causing your opponent to spin cards they don't want, or he's allowing them to set up their own next turn. And, I mean, let's let's really think about it. When he's going wide, what's he hitting for? Three to four to five, maybe? I mean, maybe you get a salt in the wound off and you hit hit big, but you're probably still looking at a six to seven base case scenario. And, granted, it doesn't take too many six to seven turns to win in Blitz. I, I completely grant you that. But I think most of your turns you're looking at three to four, and if your three to four costs you four on the backside, you're gonna lose because you have less health to start, right? That's really what I'm saying. So that's that's kind of where my head is. Um, but I, I throw it out to you guys in the community, right? What am I what am I missing here? Like, it, it, am I right? Am I wrong? I I know that a lot of people have been very excited about building with him because they're like, oh man, I can throw all the three pitches in just a completely blue deck. I don't think that works. I think somewhere, I think the answer is like somewhere in the mid-range. I just don't think we can do it yet, right? So let me know if I'm right. Let me know if I'm wrong. Let me know if you agree. Let me know if you don't. Let me know in the comments. Again, please make sure to like and subscribe to let us know that you guys are liking the fab content on the channel. Um, and again, we are very interested in hearing from you, very excited. And um, again, thank you very much for joining me today. And go Commando.